Hi, so I'm here with Arne. Arne, yeah. I'm so sorry, I'm terrible with <laughs> this. And uh, I was going to say, what do you do? But it's like, what don't you do? We're here at E7 Studios with yeah. Olafur and all of, all of the gang. Yeah, basically, I repair synths, modify them, midify them. Okay. And then I'm building stuff as well. Amazing. How did that kind of start out for you? Well, I'm just I'm just a synth nerd, really. Right. So I just started repairing my own synths and just took it from there, really. Do you think the isolation of being in, in Iceland maybe created a need for, for...? Yeah, I'm pretty much the only one that does this. Okay. You know, so... Yeah. And how does this stuff kind of get here? What's the... I don't What's know. the Silk Road to Iceland? It's kind of amazing, actually, yeah. how many synths are, are in Iceland, actually. Right, yeah. You know, a lot of them have been kept in storage and they pop up and, you know, but I also import a lot of them, so... Right. Okay, I, th I, th I think one of the joys of being working with Spitfire is that uh, I don't feel so much in competition with composers like Olafur, except on eBay. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think uh, someone said whoever dies with the most synths wins. That's you know? that's pretty much it. That's that's the truth. Yeah, um, yeah, I might win. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I, I just don't know where where you start. Do you, you know, a lot of these vintage synths. Do you, are the parts still available? Were the parts just generic kind of? Well, it depends. You know, there's a big community on the internet, obviously. Okay. And we trade parts, and we find them. And we kind of back engineer some of them and okay. create them again. And we've actually we pushed uh, the guy that made the SAM chips, which are VCO chips. We kind of pushed them to make them again. They haven't right. been in production for like 20 years or something. Okay. Oh wow. So yeah, it's an active community. That's fascinating. I mean, this is this is a world I I know. I'm, a, I'm an end user, but I know so so uh, little about. And do you yeah. find that the, the older synths, they, each model has a personality of its own to a certain degree? Yeah, definitely. Right. Yeah. I find they all have a different character. Yeah. You know? But, um, you know, they don't have to be, like, really expensive to be awesome. What, what have been your biggest kind of challenges for, for synths? Uh, that's a good question. I think I think the memory is memory mode is the, is the most challenging. Okay. But you know the other ones are pretty similar actually. Yeah. You know, challenges for me are like, you know, digital delays and stuff like that. Okay. Just because I'm an analog dude. Okay. But, right. You know, since they're pretty much all the same. And are they all mediable? They're all medieval, yeah. To a certain point. Yeah. I mean, we are now uh, developing MIDI kits for the old polyphonic synths. Wow. Most of them don't have MIDI or don't have MIDI kits. So that's what we're doing. Fantastic. Days. And you mentioned you, you build other stuff. Uh, I'm making, uh, like, yeah, like I mentioned, f uh, the MIDI kits. Okay. And I'm building a filter unit. Oh, fantastic. Which might take a couple of years, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be awesome. I think with the, this thing of kind of, I mean, obviously I make samples and I think yeah. once you've got to the end, you know that the effort is, is worth it, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. just getting to the end. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. That's fantastic. And it must be a real pleasure when you're going to power that up and all six voices. Are yeah, up. I mean, that's, that's really rewarding, taking the same thing. I actually, I, uh, you know, I like getting them like completely messed up. Really? Yeah, you know, because it's just, it's so much fun to like bring them back to life. And Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time. No it's a real pleasure talking to you. Yeah,